Welcome to episode 3 of Algo Trading using Pine Script from Market Secrets. In this episode, we are going to learn how to work with custom inputs or custom indicators. Most indicators you make using your Pine Script will not be suited to permanently hard coded variables. Often, you will want to change certain settings on the fly, such as the time period the time frame, overbought or oversold thresholds, etc. Having it in the code will make things complicated unnecessarily while customizing it. So an option to change the variables or inputs easily is a must have for any trading indicator. Luckily, PineScript makes it extremely easy to work with user inputs through their generic script setting interface. In this episode, I'll explain how to add basic input settings to the script we developed in the previous episode. So here is the script that we developed as part of episode 2 of the PineScript series. So in this episode, we'll be adding the customized input option to this particular script. So first step to get the customized indicator is getting the user input. So we need to add another line of code to this particular script to get the user input. So I'm just going to add that particular line of code here. So let's design a variable or let's create a variable. So I'm creating a variable called period and I'm going to call the input built-in function. So this is the function you need to use to get the user inputs. So I'm using the input build-in function and you need a title for this parameter. So I'm going to give the title as period for this particular parameter and I'm going to mention the type of input that we'll be getting. So it should be input dot integer. So we're getting the integer input into this period variable and we can also have the default value for this particular um, parameter. So this particular line of code, whatever that we have written right now, this is saying to the Pine script to create a variable named period with a type as integer and assign it to whatever value the user sets it to and with the default value of 50. So if user doesn't give a value, it will give the value automatically as 50. Or if user gives a value, it should be assigned automatically to this variable period. That's it. That's what this particular line of code is doing. So in this case, the title equal to period will set the test description or the parameter description in the script interface. And the type integer says to treat this input as a number and the default value 50 says set the default value of this particular parameter to 50 in case user doesn't provide any value. So now we must tell the Pine script what to do with this particular variable or number. So we are going to change the two lines of our existing code. So instead of using 100 directly as a parameter in your script, instead of hard coding it, I'm going to replace it with the variable that we have created right now. So I'm replacing it in both the places. So instead of hard coding the period inside your script, now you can get it as a user input. So let's remove this particular uh, graph from the chart. And now I'm going to go add to chart again with this new script. OK, there is a, an error here. So I'm just uh, going to change this spelling as tickets. So input. So I'm going to give a chart again. So if you see here, so now in this particular chart is exactly same as the one that we have used earlier. But instead of using the value 100, since I didn't pass any value, this is plotted based on the value that is the default value 50. So if you go to this particular settings, that is if you click on the settings for this particular indicator, you'll be able to see the time period. So you can just now adjust it graphically. You don't have to go to the code to modify it. See, you see the difference 
right here right so this is for the 100 period so earlier it was plotted for 50 which is the default value so you can click on the settings next to your indicator title on your chart and this window will appear where you can change the periods so if you change this settings now it will automatically adjust the chart and that's it with this simple pine script example we have the beginnings of an adaptable indicator a dynamic indicator likewise getting user inputs for time frames numbers text or boolean is just this simple i'll demonstrate how to use more complex user inputs in the later episodes but for now this is a great start and covers a lot of basic use cases so go ahead and try it now and let me know if you have any issues so with this i'm closing today's session today's objective was achieved which is nothing but getting the user input so if you have any queries or feedback about this particular episode please drop it down in the comment section we'll be happy to answer it please share your feedback which is extremely important for us to improvise this particular series further i would like to thank you once again for watching this particular video hit the like button if you have liked this video and share it with your friends if you find it useful also subscribe to our youtube channel and click the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video or conduct a live session